class AB audio amplifier. This is project number two of analog electronic circuits. Team members are John Tangredi, Abin Prasad, and Joby Matthew. The objective of this project was to design and build an AB audio amplifier. The amplifier required a voltage gain of at least 200. The circuit was divided into two separate sections as pre amplifier and power amplifier. Both of the circuits were first simulated in P spice and then implemented in two separate breadboards. After that, the output waveform of the circuit was analyzed using a scope and then a audio signal was inputted and played back the amplified version of it with the record again. So will be the overview of the amplifier. The amplifier we use uses an N and P type transistor to source and sync current respective. The design is simpler and expect and it has a good efficiency. One of the drawbacks for this design is the crossover dead zone or the voltage differential between the active region points of the push-pull stages. This can be overcome with the class AB design. A bias voltage of approximately 2 point volt is applied between the bases of the push-pull stages. This forces the each transistor to be slightly on the DC level, eliminating the crossover distortion. The figure shows the circuit diagram of the class AB audio amplifier. It has two different sections, pre-amplifier and power amplifier. Next is the pre-amplifier design. The group's first step was to design a preamp. A preamp is needed to increase the input signal, in this case a microphone signal, to the line level strength required by the load, or in our case, the power amp. It, is, it does this by providing stable gain while preventing induced noise that would otherwise distort the signal. This is accomplished by using a common source amplifier tied to a common emitter amplifier with appropriate biasing circuitry. The most important characteristics of the preamp are high input impedance and a good frequency response. High input impedance is accomplished using a field effect transistor and a good frequency response is obtained using a bipolar junction transistor. This is the group's design preamp schematic. The value of RG was chosen to be high, 1 mega ohms, to keep the input impedance high while preventing the input from floating if no signal is connected. To facilitate the design of the preamp, reasonable bias points needed to be chosen. The operating points shown in Table 1 were selected. The VC and VE values were chosen to center the preamp output between VCC and ground and to allow the maximum pulse possible voltage swing. IC and in turn IE were chosen such that the preamp could provide enough current to drive the power amp. This allows the rest of the components to be calculated. The calculation for the emitter resistor is shown in equation 1. The collector resistance is calculated similarly as shown in equation 2. These values were chosen to center the output of the preamplifier at 15 volts or one half of VCC and satisfy the biasing requirements. Resistance for RB1 and RB2 are set by the values chosen for VE and IB as shown in equations 3 and 4. The gain of the JFET amplifier is dependent on the input resistance of the BJT amplifier and thus must be calculated before progress is made as shown in equation 5. The desired gain of the JFET is approximately 10 volts per volt which along with the chosen RS value of 5K allows for equation 6 to be used to find RD. For the piece by simulations, all capacitor values were chosen to be 33 microfarads for simplicity. An open loop gain of 200 volts per volt in the preamp was desired such that when a negative feedback resistor is applied, the closed loop gain can accurately be calculated using equation 9. Equations 7 and 8 show the calculated gains for the preamplifier. The target of 200 volts per volt isn't completely satisfied, however, it's still close enough for the feedback equation to be effective. After all of our component values were calculated, we put them in the piecewise software. 
The graph on the top is our piecewise simulation result. It displays a gain or V-out over V-in of about 24. We then moved on to build the physical circuit. The bottom graph is the output of our signal showing a gain of 26 since our input was 100 millivolts peak to peak. These are both acceptable results and we are now ready to move on to the power amp. The final part of the circuit is the power amp. The power amp was designed for a gain of 10 and is shown in the figure. The biasing for the power amp was chosen as listed in the table. The current of one amp was selected for the output stage. Using a safety factor of 10, this leads to a Darlington base current of 10 milliamps and a base current of 1 milliamp at the common emitter input. A voltage of approximately 2.8 volts is required at VBE multiplier to compensate for the turn on voltage for both Darlington pair transistors. A base current of 2 microamps was selected for the VBE multiplier, which is more than enough to avoid the risk of a cutoff condition. The VBE multiplier was the first section of the power amp to be designed. A voltage of 2.8 volts and a current of 200 microamps results in a total resistance of 14K as shown in equation 1. Rearranging the voltage divider equation allows for resistance ratio of the VB multiplier to be calculated as shown in equation 2. Equations 3 and 4 show the final calculations for both resistors. The common emitter amplifier was biased similarly to the preamp circuit. However, the values calculated here had to be changed in the physical circuit due to invalid assumptions made during the design process. This table shows the operating points for the common emitter amplifier. These values were again chosen to center the output between VCC and ground as well as to ensure enough current would be supplied to the load. The emitter resistor value was calculated using equation 5. The total of the resistors above the collector was calculated using equation 6. The value was then divided in two to obtain the individual resistances. The base resistors were calculated with an assumed IB of 1 milliamp and the calculations are listed in equations 7 and 8. The gain for the power amp is determined by R11 and R10. R11 was chosen to be 100K which forces R10 to be 10K as shown in equation 9. For the final design R10 was reduced to 9K to help resolve a clipping problem in the power stage. Once completed, the amplifier performed perfectly without any major modifications. The frequency response from 20 Hz to 20 kHz was exceptional with a minimal drop in the gain of 1 dB at the low range. Despite the added complexity of this project, compared to the previous project, the design process was easier and uh, progressed more smoothly. After connecting an 8 ohm speaker, it resulted in a clear sound output over the entire bandwidth of the amplifier. With a musical audio signal applied, a clean and accurate reproduction of the source signal was played through the output. There was a small amount of distortion present during the first time of the test. This distortion was later eliminated by adjusting certain resistor values. Table below represents the recorded results and the obtained results. All the recorded results of this project have been met. Thank you. Thank you.